shut up. Oh, Sling your rock. All right, all right, I'm coming. What bloody hell can that be? It's only nine o'clock. No fags. <laughs> oh, I thought you were still in bed. But there you are, up dressed, bright eyed and bushy tailed. Sod. Not in the best of moods, obviously. Never mind, I'll soon cheer you up. I said sod off. Now then, you are Sebastian Llewellyn Brown. Get lost. Shall I take that as an affirmative? Take it how you want. Paralysed from the waist down. Hoorah, this is bloody Sherlock Holmes. Crushed vertebrae of the lower lumbar region. How did you do that? Shelling peanuts. Well, we are in a mood, aren't we? Well, I can't speak for you, but I was fine until you started ringing that thing. I'm having a dream beautiful dream. I can run and jump, you know, and turn cartwheels, but only when I dream. I see. Have you been in that chair all night? What's it to you? In fact, have you been in that chair all of yesterday? That fierce look is supposed to frighten me. You're failing miserably. What's it to you if I've been in this chair for the past fortnight? I'll tell you what. You keep your weight on your buttocks for hours and hours and ends without changing position and you'll get sores. Nasty, runny, smelly sores. So we'll go through to the bedroom, get you on the bed, and I'll massage your back and behind. Get the circulation going a bit. Who cares? If I get sores, I won't feel them. I could cut my bloody legs off and I wouldn't feel anything. Go on, stick a knife in them. I wouldn't even flinch. Right. I've had enough of this buggering about. First of all, I'll tidy up this pigsty, and then I'll make some coffee. Give you a chance to sober up. Don't you tell me what to do. Just because my legs don't work, there's oh, nothing wrong with my head. shut up. I'm fed up with your whinging, self-pity and crap. Look at that ashtray. Am I entitled to No, my... you're not. Shush. Now then, do you take milk and sugar in your coffee? No, looking at you, I think you need it black and strong. Thank you. Better. A few more pleases and thank yous and we'll get on fine. Sebastian, I bet your parents had a sense of humour. Llewellyn Brown. I bet your mum was a Llewellyn. How did you guess? Didn't fancy being plain old Mrs. Brown, did she? You're right there. She made my dad change his name. Well, now you know all about my family, perhaps I might be allowed to know who you are. Sorry, most remiss of me. It said in the handbook I should announce my name, rank and qualifications on meeting a client. I'm Nurse Stover. Before you make any jokes about it, I've heard them all many, many times before. That means nothing to me. So, to what, to, to what do I owe the dubious pleasure of this early morning uninvited visit? A very fair question. I am your friendly and some say sexy physiotherapist from England. Who? Executive Medical Insurance Services UK Limited. Don't forget the UK Limited because we'd treat you better if you were a Yank. That still doesn't explain why you disturbed my well earned rest. You are a count number 172829 and are entitled to our platinum service. Gould, if you're the platinum service, I'd hate to see what the standard one looks like. Oh, very cutting. We are in a nasty mood, aren't we? Anyway, now I've cleared up this pigsty, let's get you on the bed. Off with those trousers. Let me have my coffee first. Right, well, we'll start on your legs and feet first. Where can you afford our platinum service? It's only for the rich. I am rich. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I'd sooner walk. True, but if you can't walk, you may as well sit around in comfort. About a lot of comfort sitting in this all day. Don't you get out much? <laughs> I used to, but people kept looking at me, so I don't bother anymore. You don't bother changing your socks either, do you? There doesn't seem much point. Oh, there is. How long have you been out of hospital? Nearly a week. And did they tell you that even though your feet don't work, they still sweat? Not that I recall. Well, they do, and you'll smell like old cheese. 
I'm sorry. I never thought. Never thought what? Well, I, I never thought anybody would be messing around with my feet. Messing about? Messing about? I'll have you know I'm an expert in this messing about. I've got qualifications. These, my darling, are healing hands. Smelly healing hands at the moment. Mimosa. Coffee good? Oh, the kettle's boiled. Right. Coffee's all round then. I think I deserve one after your tea. For goodness sake, stop going on. I'm supposed to be the one bemoaning my fate. Ah, struck down in the bloom of youth, eh? You might say that. If you're a callous, unthinking cow, you might say that. I'm sorry. But it's true, isn't it? How did you do it? Playing rugby. Ah, self-inflicted wound, eh? Hardly. I was the hooker. The scrum collapsed on top of me and everybody else jumped on top of that. And what's Just your the referee, I think. What's your prognosis? What did the medical expert say in your future prospects in the dancing field, that is? I'm buggered from the waist down. Oh, yes. I'm sure that's the medical term they used. But did they say how they expect you to progress? No, they didn't. But your spinal cord isn't severed. No. So there must be some hope of improvement, however small. Oh, yes, yes. They were very definite. They used words like sometimes, possibly, partial, somewhere over the rainbow if I follow Yellow Brick Road. I think it was so manged up they don't know about much hope. Tell me say I'm not optimistic. I've given my rugby weeks away. Well, you never know. Where there's a spinal cord, however manged up, there's hope. Now then, should I minister to your feet with these healing hands in case one day they decide to work? Very noble of you, I'm sure, but I'm afraid your efforts will be in vain. Oh, there's nothing noble about it, I can assure you. I'm paid very handsomely by the hour for my Flory Nightingale efforts on your behalf. How many hours? Two hours every other day, eight hours a week. Aren't you a lucky boy? I wouldn't have said so. Are you still feeling sorry for yourself? Wouldn't you? It's too true, I'd be an absolute brat. Couldn't you live with your family? Oh, you must be joking. Dearest, dearest Mama lives in the backwoods of the Loire Valley in France with an ageing hippie. And dutiful daddy is making a fortune in the markets of the Far East. He's with a Barbie doll, mostly consistent with silicon. Both their new partners don't like me, and might I add, the feeling is mutual. So that's why you're rich? I suppose so, but, well, the rugby club had insurance. I had insurance. My grandmother left me a fortune in her will, and so did my uncle. Major and Pater are rolling in it, and, well, I make quite a bit myself working on the stock market. Shall we just say money is not an issue? Hence the platinum policy. Let's get down to business. What do you want to be called? Petal? <laughs> Very funny. I can call you Sebastian, Mr Llewellyn Brown, or Sir. Take your pick. My friends call me Seb. Well, I'd better call you Sir then, hadn't I? <laughs> what about you? What about me? Well, I can hardly call you Miss Sober now, can I? I don't see why not. Anyway, it's Miss Sober. Or you can call me Nurse, or you can call me Gorgeous if you wish. Why are you being so coy? You must have a Christian name. Everybody's got a Christian name. Pet. <laughs> Pet. It's short for Petula. My mum was a fan of some old singer, but if you ever call me Petula, you'll never walk again. Or breathe. Only my mum calls me Petula. <laughs> right. Pet it is then. So I suppose you hate your mother as well. Oh no, my mum's lovely. I ring her every day. We talk for hours. Did you drink all this beer? Uh, no, I had a few friends around last night. And did they bring around the grass? What grass? Oh, come off it. I've never smoked it, but I know what it smells like, and this place reeks of it. Ah, yes. The magic marijuana. It, um, helps me, um, forget. And it passes the time. And it's also the start of the slippery slope, you know. I think that's my business. Quite right, but I don't think much of your so-called friends bringing you around stuff like that. They're the only friends I've got left. What about your rugby buddies? Oh, yes. They all came to see me, once. But now the season's over, they're conspicuous by their absence. The president of the club, of course, rings me up for five minutes every week. To get an update, don't you know? And what do you tell him? Last time I told him not to bother. He sounded bored, and I know I was. Right. Well, we'll have a go at that, that other smelly foot, <clears throat> and then we'll get you through to the bedroom. Can you get in the bath on your own? There's nothing on too subtle hints. Most definitely, can you? Yes, I've got one with a little door that you can sit in. I told you, all mod cons. And I uh, promise to use it before you call again. And perhaps you could spend your nights in bed instead of on your poor sore bum? I'll try, but you know what it's like, this mad social world that I live in. I'm out a few too many again. Are your friends coming round again tonight? Yes, I expect so. 
Don't they have to get up for work? No, they're a bit down on the luck at the moment. You know, between jobs. How long between jobs? Quite some time, I think. Look, I don't blow you well, no. What does it matter? You don't need to be so defensive. I'm not. Say so. I do bloody well say so, Ms. Stober. You mind your own business. Quite right. I'm sorry, sir. I'll get on with my job, sir. I'll pull my forelock and curtsy if you wish, sir. After all, you pay the bills, sir. Yes, I do. And I think it might be a good idea if you remembered that. Have you finished my useless bloody legs? Most definitely. And now we'll make a start on your bum and let's hope it's not as smelly, sir. <laughs> Give you ten minutes to have a bath. I can't. I've got work to do. Please, I'll pay if you go over your time. It's not the money. I've got another appointment in just over an hour. Oh, come on then, let's get you in the bar. I can manage, thank you. Surely you're not embarrassed after all you've been through? Not normally, no. But you are with me? Yes. Right. I want you bathed and on that bed in ten minutes, okay? Yes, Petula. Any more beer? Anything to smoke? I couldn't get any more beer or grass, mate. You know I haven't got any cash, and you only gave me ten quid last night. I thought I gave you fifty pounds. <laughs> we wish you had, don't we, Pris? I wish. We'd had 50 quid for ages, that was Jade. Hang on. Look, I had 200 pounds in here at the start of the week. And now I've only got 50. Well, we haven't had it, mate. Well, someone has. I hope you're not accusing us, Deb. We can soon sold off. We won't stay where we're not trusted. There's plenty of places we'd be welcome. Look, all I said was I had 200 pounds in here three days ago. That's all. No, we'd better go if that's the way you feel. Look. I'm not accusing you. Perhaps I gave it to someone else. No, we better go if that's the way you feel. No, we better go if that's the way you feel. Come on, Pris. You want to remember who your friends are. Who it is who comes round here every night, has a laugh and a drink. Don't see anyone else coming round to keep you company. Look. You're my mates. You're my mates. I didn't mean to upset you. Look, here. Yeah. Take this 50 quid and get some more gear tomorrow. Well, we won't get much for 50 quid. Not these days, will we, Jase? No, I'm afraid not. Grass is a bit expensive at the moment. Well, we need at least a ton to score for a week or so. But we've got to take the risk of buying it. And we don't want to be doing it every night. Well, that's all the money I've got, I'm afraid. You've got a cash card. We'll go get you some more. I'm not exactly mobile, or hadn't you noticed? Oh, we'll deal with all that. Just give us a pin number. We'll go and get some. I don't think so. You see? You don't trust us. Oh, yeah. You think just because we're, rot we're, we're broke, we'd rob you rotten? Well, I tell you this, some of us have got standards. Ah, uh, don't bother him, Pris. Show his true face now. A bloody rich git. Don't trust the likes of us. I don't believe it. After all we've done for you. Stay on your own, then. You're talking to those friends who dropped you, didn't they? Come on, Dave. Let's go. Come on, Dave. Let's go out and have some fun. I'll take the card. I don't care. Seven nine four nine. Now come on, let's have a drink and kind a of laugh. No, I think we ought to go get money now, then we could score tonight and have a smoke. No, get the gear for tomorrow. We've got plenty of it. Oh, I'm really looking forward to having a smoke tonight. Oh, look, have some wine. Oh, I've got a few bottles in the other room. No, come on, we can go get some cash now. No, we'll get the gear tomorrow. Don't be nuisance. I'm gonna go fetch that wine. What you could do is a holiday, somewhere in the sun, where you could relax, chill out, you'd do the world of good. That might be a bit difficult in my case. I can't see me trotting up the aircraft steps. Oh, you'd be surprised how they cater for the handicap these days. They've got rabbits and lifts on the flight and in the hotels. I'm sure Jason would come with us. The three of us could have a great time. We could look after you. Here, Jace. Seb was saying we ought to go on holiday with him. We ought to go to Florida. We would want to go to Disney World. Florida? That's a great idea, Seb. When? Huh? When should we go to Florida? Who's going to Florida? We are, you silly boy. Who said so? You did. I did? When? Just now. Didn't you remember? Oi! You bloody well passed out. Oi! Seb! Seb! Man. 
I'll leave you a minute to go. Uh, do you remember the number? It's 7949. Go now and get some cash. We've got half a dozen bottles of wine over here. Posh looking stuff. We'll have them. He's not going to know how much we drank. Anyway, what is all this about Florida? Well, it's worth a try, isn't it? Yeah, too true. Anything we can get from the pathetic geek. Yeah, look at his wallet, see if he's got anything else worth nicking. Nah, we've done well tonight. He'll still be here tomorrow. That's true, we all know where to find him. <laughs> he can't go far. <laughs> <laughs> chair again all night, haven't you? And good morning to you, Petula. Don't you, Petula me. What did I tell you yesterday about being in the chair all night? I hadn't intended to. Oh, passed out, did you? I suppose I must have done. I'll have a cup of coffee if you're making one. I'm not your maid, you know. Get on the bed. Now? Hang on a minute. Aren't you supposed to come every other day? <laughs> Unless I'm so hungover I've missed a day. I haven't, have I? Uh, no, you haven't. It's just that, well, my next appointment isn't till ten and I passed by here anyway, so I thought I'd pop in to see how you're managing. Just as well I did. I'll give you back and behind a rub. Well, uh, let me have my coffee first before you manhandle me. Why don't you have one as well? I shouldn't. Let's clear that stuff off the table. I see your friends were around again last night. You noticed. At least you weren't smoking any grass. Not last night, no. Eh? We had a quiet night with a few beers and some wine. How much did you drink? I don't know. Who cares? Well, you must have known how much you started with. Does it matter? Yes, it does. Oh, well, let me think. Seems it's so important to you. Uh, there were eight cans of lager in the fridge uh, and a couple of bottles of white wine. Oh, yeah, and a uh, half dozen bottles of a rather nice burgundy in the spare room. Well, this fridge is empty of booze and anything else. Don't you eat? Burgundy out there either. Don't be daft. I mean, are there eight bottles around here somewhere? Yes, yeah, so I shouldn't have took a walk with your friends. How many did you say there were? Just the two. Jason and Priscilla. So the three of you had six cans and two bottles of wine. And judging by the looks of you, I'd say you drunk all yours and they took theirs home. Is that your wallet? Is there any get messy? No. Not really. Not really, they're not fucking pissing all the reasons. Well, um, there were a bit of squid in here last night, but I'm sure I gave the Jason to get some more food for tonight. And that's all, is it? More or less. Well, come on, you're acting like a child. What else? Well, my cash card's missing. But it's no use to anyone unless they've got the pin number. And you didn't give them your pin number, did you, Sebastian? You didn't give them your pin number. I'm not sure. I don't think so. How can you not know whether you gave it to them or not? I was a bit confused last night. They said it was a matter of trust and I didn't want to offend them. They've been what? good to me. So you gave them your credit card and your PIN number? Yeah. So to sum up last night's little party, they got £50 out of your wallet, six bottles of good burgundy and the chance to empty your bank account. More or less. More or less nothing. That's exactly what they got. I did say I was confused. The confused substitute legless. Sorry. You'll forgive us. How I was confused is unimportant. But confused I was. However, I don't really remember numbers very well at the best of times. So there's a chance that uh, when I'm confused, I might easily get a number wrong. You crafty sod. You gave them the wrong number. Just slightly. Uh, you see, when it comes to money, that was my profession. And even when I'm absolutely confused... Ratted. Ratted. My natural financial acumen remains sharp. You lied. That's true. Uh, I think I might be a bit upset, don't you? Well, you might have seen the last of them if you're lucky. You've been a bit hard on them, you know. They're just the kind of people who like to have a good time, but unfortunately they can't afford to. Well, that's one way of looking at them. But from the way you described them to me, I would say that they were crooked, lazy, layabout scum. Thank you, Petula, sister of mercy and champion of the downtrodden underclasses, who, owing to certain stars and ill luck, 
find themselves in positions well below your lofty stature. Well, take him scum. I said it and I meant it. Stuff me, it's Norman Tebbit in a frog. I believe in the old adage, help those who try to help themselves. Or if, of course, those of us who can pay. That's different. I help you do things that you can't do for yourself. For money. Well, of course, for money. I can't live on air. Have you tried asking those idle creeps why they don't work? There is unemployment, you know. Cobblers. True, that's a dying trade. There must be hundreds of them out of work. By cobblers, I meant I disagree. There's work for those who want to work. All right, all right. There are a bunch of idle wasters, but they amuse me. And I don't exactly see a queue of people outside that door eager to keep my company. So, Miss Right Wing Reactionary, you mind your own bloody business. You look after my legs and my bum. All right, got nothing to do with me, what you get up to, unless it involves your legs and your bum. And drink your coffee. That's better. I'm getting some respect now. Well, apart from my legs and my bum, that is. Let's talk of more pleasant things. For instance? You. What about me? What do you know what's about Come me? Come on, you know all about me. My most intimate details. And I know hardly anything about you. I don't discuss my intimate details with patients. <laughs> you haven't got any patients at all. All right, clients, customers, whatever you want to call yourself. We've got work to do. Surely you can talk to me while you do that. It will make things a, make things a bit more interesting. Are you going to go on like this every day? Definitely. All right, just to stop you whinging, what is it you want to know about me? Come on. You said you wanted to know all about me. Fire away. Well, um, are you married? Just because you're not wearing a ring doesn't mean anything. Nurses don't wear rings, do they? Or you uh, could be divorced. <laughs> you could have been shacked up with someone since you left school. Rings don't mean much these days. For your information, I'm not married, I never have been married, and what, by the way I feel at the moment, I never will be married. Ah, so there was a fellow then. Why do you want to know? Just making conversation. It's very boring sitting here. You may be massaging my feet, but I can hardly feel anything. You just interest me. Right, let's get this over and done with as quickly as possible. To sum up my love life to date, in my 26 years I've had two permanent liaisons, with the opposite sex I might add. Oh, of course. Thank you. The last one ended about six weeks ago when he left to work in Brussels for Kit, without so much as a kiss my bum or goodbye after two and a half years. Anyway, I hope that goes some way to satisfying your morbid curiosity, so I find the whole bloody subject painful. Ah, uh, yes, uh, I see. Uh, obviously, I had no idea. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pry into your private life. I'm a tax of idiot, aren't I? Oh, he did me a favour, really. I didn't live with him because I loved him. I was just too lazy to do anything about it. I should be grateful, really, that he made the decision for me. But it's going to be hard affording our flat on just one salary. I may have to get an evening job, you know, go on the game. <laughs> Madame Petula, French massage, a speciality. And is this the uh, French massage? Oh, nah, dearie. This is your genuine British Toss true leg massage, much sought after by your kinky blue bloods. It's the latest thing in top class titillation. Now you know what a bargain you're getting, don't you? I don't suppose there's a chance I could get a, a sample of the French massage, is there? Don't be so rude. Behave yourself. <laughs> hey, that was marvellous. You realise something? What? When you hit me net just now. Didn't feel a thing. Totally famous. Sebastian? Sebastian? The door was open, so I came in. Oh, come on, you can come out. I'm not going to hit you again. Sebastian? Well, here's a mystery. I wonder where he could have got to. Sebastian? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Mr. Llewellyn Brown? Are you around? Coming as fast as I can, Your Highness. Please don't have me flogged. And where have you been this early in the morning? I don't have to tell you everything. I need to keep some of my mystery. Well, I'd like to bet with you that you've been to the paper shop in the Pakistani Emporium on the corner. Well, there's my mystery gone. I don't know how you do it. You must be psychic as well as sexy. Oh, we are chirpy this morning. Bathed, shaved and powdered. Here, just take a nip of this. Lovely. You look a different man. I can see the whites of your eyes. Your, the whites of your eyes are white for a change. And this flat. 
doesn't look like the back of a Chinese takeaway. What's the occasion? Oh, nothing special, but, well, you'd complain that I didn't smell too sweet, as I recall. So I thought I'd better have a scrub. After all, it is spring, and I've got my bath, you know, with a little door in. I had a bit too much to drink the other night, and I uh, opened the door without letting the water out first. <laughs> so I'm looking for a new cleaning lady. She doesn't have to be a lady, of course, but uh, as long as she can scrub or whatever. And do I take it from this squeaky clean behaviour that your friends didn't show and you had a good night's sleep in your bed for a change? Right again. How, I don't know how you do it. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? I'm sure somewhere in my ancestry there was a Sherlock Holmes. Please, sit down. Okay. And can I make you a cup of coffee? Lovely. Right. Coffee for a lovely lady coming up. I don't believe this. Who is this sexy, charming, handsome young man I see before me? Just the same old Seb Brown, minus a few layers of muck in the pond. What happened to your friends last night? Why didn't they show? I would think they were a bit upset. Oh, shame. Yes, I suppose I must think there's a certain amount of, a certain lack of trust on my part. Surely not. Yes, they were delicate, sensitive creatures and I must have hurt them to their very souls. Poor Wallet. That could possibly be closer to the truth. Anyway, chances are I've seen the last of them. Oh, would you like some chocolates with your coffee? Oh, yes, please. I'm a bit of a chocoholic, you know. Are these all for me? Well, thank you. They're lovely. I'll get the coffee. And then we'll get on with your physio. Yeah, I suppose so. What did you get up to here on your own last night, then? Well, uh, apart from the spring cleaning, you mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, nothing much. Just watched the telly and had an early night. Snap. What? Snap. Me too. Oh, go on. Can't imagine someone like you having to spend an evening on their own. I didn't have to. I'm pestered by men all the time, but I chose to. Good film on the box last night, wasn't it? Yeah, it's all right, but... It's always better when you wish someone, isn't it? Well, that's true, but you could say that about almost anything. I suppose you must be a bit lonely. What with your relationship just having finished? Ah, yeah, I forgot I told you about Paul, didn't you? Paul, was it? Yeah, Paul the Pratt. He caught me at a weak moment. A dork in wolf's clothing. A dork in wolf's clothing? An interesting description. Can you explain? Well, when I met him, he was handsome and virile, flashing dark eyes, snowy teeth, a real charmer. Oh, a maiden's dream, eh? Exactly. I should have known it was too good to be true. Oh, dear. Prince turned into a frog, did he? Oh, no, worse than that. I like frogs. No. Two weeks of moving in together and his eyes stopped flashing and his teeth went dull and his virility dropped to once a month. <laughs> I lost all confidence in myself. I thought I'd lost my sex appeal. Oh, I can reassure you on that count. Most definitely not. Thank you. I needed that. But it's true, you know, about doing things on your own. Even with pitiful Paul in the flat, it was better than being alone. Tell me about it. Why do you think I look forward to those lowlifes coming round? Anyone's better than no one. I'm sorry I went on about them. I'm in the same boat, really, aren't I? We should get together. Yes, we should. If you really mean it, that is. What about tonight? I could dip round to the corner shop and get a video. Maybe send that for a takeaway. Not tonight, I can't. Oh, well, of course, I understand if you don't want to. I do want to. I've got to be there for my mum tonight. Oh, yes, of course you have. It's her 50th birthday. She's been planning it for months. She loves a good party, and I've taken the afternoon off to help her get ready. I haven't got any brothers or sisters, you see. When I was born, she took one look at me and said, that's enough. Well, what about your dad? I'm free tomorrow night if you're still interested. Yes, great. Of course, did you realise that I shall see you in the morning and in the evening? Can you stand me twice in one day? Mm, I think I could quite get used to it, actually. Come on, let's get you on the bed. Oh, I love it when you talk dirty. Bed. Can I lie on my back today? Cheeky, on your front. Spoil sport. <laughs> Hello, have you brought me some birthday cake? Open up, Seb, it's Jason Prick. We've got some booze and some gear. Oh, oh what do they want? I'm a bit busy at the moment, Jason. Oh, come on, Seb, it's cold out here. Oh, I could have done without this. All right, then, come on up. What's all this crap about you being busy when your friends call to cheer you up? You don't look too busy to me. I felt like a quiet night. You can have plenty of those when you're dead. That's what I say. 
She's right, old mate. Come on, cheer up here. Have a beer. You might as well have this too for the good it was. Didn't it work? You know bloody well it didn't. You gave it the wrong number on purpose. And that's all we've done for you. That will stop. Right, boys, wait. That will do, Priscilla. She's a bit upset at the moment. We had to buy this lot. And this. Pay for it out of our own pockets. And it's hard, mate, with both of us being out of work. I gave you some money the other night. Yeah, like you gave the right number to your card. We stood out in the cold while that cash machine... Chris, Chris. Seven, a few too many the other night. That's why he got the number on. And that's why he thinks he gave us some money. Now, isn't that right, Seb? Um, well, yes, if you say so. Look, I'm really not in the mood for drinking anything tonight. Or smoking anything, either. But look, I'll give you money, the money for the stuff. I don't expect you to pay for it. I just want to have a quiet evening. Oh, come on, James, let's go. It's like a bloody morgue here. Of course, but we don't just come around to see it ratty. We come around to keep a good friend company. I'm not in the mood. Look. Maybe you're the kind of guy who needs a little excitement. You're the kind of guy that needs a little excitement in his life, just like us. But it's... You're not the kind to sit around moping. You're not you're the kind to sit around moping. No, isn't that right? Yep, that's me, old up and at him said. Only I'm starting to realise I can't get up anymore. Oh, aren't we a bit down tonight? Not really. Just coming to my senses. Being realistic, sorting my life out. What do you need to sort out? Nice place, plenty of dosh, good friends. He's got him, ain't he, Fritz? Suppose so. If you say so. Well, apart from not having any legs. Apart from not having any legs, I think if I were him. Well, apart from not having any legs, I think if I were him, I'll get left with every night. Yeah, I'm a joke. <laughs> Shut it, Chris. That's poor taste, that is. Sorry about that, Seb, but she's got a bit of a sick sense of humour sometimes. Forget about it. I know what she means. I've felt like that myself. See? You're not always right, you know. I just realised I can't stay drunk for the rest of my life. What's brought all this on? Who have you been talking to? Nobody, really. Just the physiotherapist who comes round to massage me. Oh, I see. I bet it's a girl. It's a girl, isn't it? You lucky sod. A bit of the other on the National Health. Oh, not too many of us getting that. Bugger off! It's nothing like that. She's a professional. Oh, we all did. I shan't tell you again. Keep your trap shut. I can't leave breathing. Oh, look, why don't we just have a friendly joint between us and just chill out for a bit? I've told you I'm not in the mood. Oh, come on, James. Let's go. It's like a bloody morgue in here. Look, Seb, we can do something else. What do you fancy doing? This nurse, she's really got you worked up, hasn't she? You know what it is? It's the black stockings that do it. You know, most patients fancy the nurse. It's quite natural. That's what it is. You're feeling a bit frisky. I bet you were doing all right before the accident. Getting it regular, were you? You were looking for a bit of a action in the old underpants department, aren't you? I don't really think this is any of your business. <laughs> of course not. Didn't mean to pry. I need a pee. Look, now she's gone, we can talk man to man. There's something I need to tell you about, Chris. She really fancies you. In fact, last night, she was saying, how would you turn her on? I don't really think I really want to know about this. Now, Seth, hang on, hear me out. Look, we're mates, aren't we? You've shared your home and you've shared your booze. And I'm not a jealous man where a friend's concerned. Now, look, a special mate is in need of a little female companionship. Of course, in strict privacy, I would not mind. Well, Chris, she can be delighted she holds you in so much affection. Let me just make sure I understand. You're suggesting that Priscilla and I have left here for this evening. Well, look, in a normal way, I would. I've got anyone for trying it on. But this is different, isn't it? You know, in your position, it's not the same. Look, I don't know what you can manage to do, but you needn't be embarrassed. Chris would help. She's very understanding. She's a very caring person. I'm sure she is. <laughs> and I must say, this is a very generous offer, but, um... Are you sure she'll agree? Of course. Leave that up to me, old mate. Now look, if you were to offer a nice present, it might make all that more energetic. Present? Well, I'm not sure what I could offer her. Do you think she'd be offended if I offered her money? I said, bless you, are. Uh, you're so sensitive. Can't go wrong with money. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think? Well, 50 quid would get her a nice present, wouldn't it? Sure.
sure it would. So, your babe, we were just talking about you, weren't we, Seb? Yes, um, Jason was uh, telling me how affectionate you are. Was he? Well, I can be, Seb, if I'm treated right. Uh, yes, uh, Jason was saying that you, um, quite fancy me. That's, that's right, always have been, ever since we first met. That's right, there what I tell you. You're onto a good thing here, mate. Jason thought it would be nice if I uh, gave you a little present. He thought 50 pounds. Did he? Hmm? Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> but of course, you can be as generous as you like, can't you, sir? We can make this a regular thing, can't we, Pris? Could we? Uh, let me just get this straight. You're prepared to let your girlfriend have and I have sex on a regular basis for 50 pounds a month. Well, that's a bit of a crude way of putting it, but basically, that's the deal. Yes, that's the deal. And it's a good deal, mate. Deliver it to your door. What do you think? What do I think? I think I'd sooner have it cut off and put it anywhere near her. Get out, both of you! I shouldn't be too hasty. You're not going to get too many offers to stay your in. Just go! I should think about this. You do it, I'd be pissed off! You should try to help some of them out. Oh, don't beg on my behalf. I didn't want to do it with a cripple anyway. Yeah, you're right, Chris. You try to help someone less fortunate than themselves, and this is the thanks you get. Well, I'm going to take our beer back. Oh, no, you won't. I paid for that. And who's going to stop me? Listen, mate, I'll tell you something about me. My legs may be bloody useless, but after all the hours of weights and training I've had, my greatest asset as a rugby player was my upper body strength. You come anywhere near me, and I'll pull your head off, pal. You then frighten me! Well, I should! Oh, come on, Jace. You wait till you tie me with your pathetic cripple. It's like Jason said. You'll regret turning me down. The only types you're ever going to get are weirdos with fancy cripples and amputees. They get a turn on out of it. Well, I don't. Even I've got my standards. I prefer men like Jason here, on two legs, like a real man. I'd have a job lots of pukes doing it with you. I'm not one told a grudge, Seb. And if you don't find a weirdo, <laughs> and I doubt you will, give me a bell. Don't hold your breath. this morning? Fine, thanks. Sleep well? Not really, no. Oh, is there a problem? No. Were the friends from hell around again last night? You noticed? Well, it wasn't difficult. But still, judging by the looks of you, you didn't get sloshed and you didn't smoke any wacky baffy. So what did you and the gruesome twosome get up to then? Nothing much. Just talking mainly. Well, I don't know what you were talking about, but it seems to have depressed you. Well, I'm all right. Did you tell them to get lost? In so many words. And did they get abusive? You might say that. Just a touch. You shouldn't let them upset you. They're not worth it. They didn't upset me. You're doing a good impression of someone who's upset. Look, we have to talk about them. They've gone and I doubt they'll ever be back. So let's just forget about them. Subject closed. Quite right. Rubbish flushed down the toilet. Now then, what have you got planned for us tonight? Tonight? Oh, yes. Well, what do you fancy? Well, I was promised a sexy video, an intimate dinner for two, and then, well, who knows? I promised that? Well, not exactly, but you said a video and a Chinese takeaway, and uh, the rest was all in my fertile imagination. Us working girls have to dream, you know. Am I far off the mark? No. Of course, though. I've been asking around about you. A bit of a stud, it seems. Well, I think it's only fair to warn you that I will be wearing my 1922 nurse in chastity belt, as recommended by the Health and Safety Executive when being entertained by lusty young men. Well, you needn't worry, there'll be nothing like that. I was only joking, Seb. Mind you, I wouldn't mind if you did take a chance to me. Well, you can just forget about it. What has got into you? Wasn't those creeps last night? Did they upset you? Just a few home truths, that's all. What home truths? And what have they got to do with us? Us? What do you mean, us? Well, you know, me and you, we were getting on so well. Oh, come on, you know what I mean, Seb. Oh, yes, I know what you mean. There's you, a lovely, bright, intelligent young girl. And then there's me. We're going to have a romantic evening, are we? Yes, what's wrong with that? Just about everything. You didn't think so yesterday. That was yesterday. Look, Seb, I don't know what went on here last night. It's got nothing to do with us. I'm not some wide-eyed, innocent schoolgirl. I know the score with your disability, and it makes no difference. 
fancy me, do you? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Turn you on, do I? I don't understand. Oh, I do. Is that why you do this job? Cripple will turn you on, don't I? What about Auntie T? I think you've got a bundle of letters. What? All I'm, cons- all I'm saying is you'd have to be weird to fancy me. Oh, I was told by an expert. A professional, in fact. Still, if that's how you get your kicks, come on round tonight. Enjoy yourself. Pet! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Pet! Idiot! 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 Hello? Executive Medical Insurance? What? No, I don't know what department I want. My physio's gone. Gone. Departed. No longer here? Well, how about you put me through to someone who can? All right, then put me through to them then. What are they called? Assignments Department. Right, put me through. Oh, God. Green sleeves, that's all I need. (laughs) Hello? Hello? Hello, I'm about bloody time. I want my physio back. Sebastian Llewellyn Brown. What number? Oh, hang on a minute. 172829. Yes, that's me. Yes, all right, don't go into all that. Nurse, nurse over, that's right, yes. Yes, she came, but then she left. I don't know. I might have said something to upset her. No, she didn't give me my treatment, and I wanted to come back. Bloody green sleeves. Hello? 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 Oh, it's all sorted out. What does that mean? Will she come back? Within the hour. Thank you very much. That's all I needed to know. Right. Now to get back in the good books. Say it with flowers at Pelham's. Hello, Pelham Flowers. I want a bunch, now. Oh, expensive ones. No, I don't know what I want. I don't know anything about flowers. Yes, roses will be fine. Who cares? It's red. Head will be fine. Um, what do you mean long? How long do they come? <laughs> oh, I see, long, long. Uh, yeah, about two dozen. Yes, I'm sure they are, but uh, um, money is no object as uh, long as they're here within the hour. What do you mean you're not sure? I only live round the corner. Look, if they're not here within ten minutes, just forget about it. What? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, flat three, Planet House. That's her. Now, look, hurry up and there'll be a big tip. Hello, I'm Valerie Turner. You must be um, Sebastian Llewellyn Brown. Push the vertebrae, physio and massage below the waist, basic exercise upper body. What would you like to be called? (laughs) Well, it doesn't say anything about your vocal cords, so I take it you're ignoring me. I'll call you Mr Brown and you can call me Nurse Turner or Mrs Turner. Now, shall we get on, because I'm running late. Who are you? Well, I thought we'd established our credentials. 
Look, that should make everything clear. Where's Pet? She's on another case. We've swapped. I'm looking after you from now on. Well, you can just bug her off. Oh dear, oh dear. We are in a mood this morning, aren't we? <laughs> Pet said you might be difficult. <laughs> Look, I'm not too swapped. Look, I'm not too swapped like a bag of gobstoppers. Oh, it's all right. It's quite official. The office has been informed, and I'm now down on the computer as your carer. You're all mine. Mm. Now, shall we get on? We'll see about this. I pay for money, and I take my choice. And you lady ain't it. You're wasting your time. Pet said she'd rather resign than come here again, so even if you bully them into changing it to another one, it won't do you any good. We'll see. Hello, yes. This is Sebastian Llewellyn Brown, number 172829. Uh, could you please give me the number of nurse for two lifts over? What? Look, I don't give a damn about your bloody company policy. I want to speak to her. No, I don't want you to give her a message. Look here, let me speak to someone in authority. Look, it doesn't matter who you speak to, you'll get the same answer. It's company policy. They're very strict about it. I mean, they can't go giving our phone number out to any loony who phones up. Wouldn't be safe. Now just calm down and we'll get on with your treatment. Pet's made her mind up and I can assure you, you're not going to change it. I would if I could talk to her. Really? I doubt it. I wouldn't have said you had the most persuasive of personalities. <laughs> the phone book. She's got to be in here somewhere. Ooh. What do you mean? She's got to be in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, I bet she's ex-directory. No. Nope. Then why isn't she in here? Well, because until recently she shared the flat with a young man. Paul the Pratt! <laughs> I don't think you'll find it under P. <laughs> well, what's his surname? Well, it isn't Pratt. Well, this is ridiculous. Give me her number or I promise you I'll get you the bloody sack. Oh, what a nasty little boy you are when you get your rats up. I am and I can get a lot nastier. I'm a bad news customer and you're a ten a penny physio. So you better start to cooperate, or be on to your boss and get you the bum's rush. And at your age, jobs don't come that easy. Oh, and that's what you think, is it? That's what I know. Well, let me tell you something, Mr Llewellyn Bully Brown. I've been with this company for ten years. I was their first recruit when they came over from America. The UK Vice President thinks that the sun shines out of my rectal orifice. <laughs> I'm the best nurse they've ever had. I'm qualified in physio, intensive care, midwifery and mental health. In short, I am a bloody treasure. You, on the other hand, are an awkward patient who's already been refused treatment by one of our best nurses. So should it come to a choice between you or I, I would go on to another patient and you would be assigned some new and untried starter, someone far less qualified than me, or they might even tell you to off it. If you'll pardon the expression, sir. <laughs> now, do you want this treatment or not? Oh, go on, please give me a number. No. You're a hard bitch. Yes. But you're supposed to be a carer. Oh. What do you mean? You spend your life caring for people. Only some people, others I just treat. <laughs> you, for instance. I couldn't care less if your legs wither up and drop off. I will give you the best treatment. But I couldn't give a toss about you personally. Have you ever thought of going into politics? Are <laughs> <laughs> you always as outspoken as this? Oh no, I'm feeling quite agreeable today. But on occasions, people say I can down my food. Bastard! Thank one to no one. Oh well. You better get on with my legs then before they wither away. You see, they all fall for my gentle bedside manner in the end. Patience and forbearance. Oh, how lovely. You shouldn't have bothered. Where's the chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll save it for you. You've got balls. Yes, I know. More than most men I've found. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I said £100, and that's the deal. Take it or leave it. We'll take it. Just let me consult with my colleague. What are you two up to? Well, wouldn't you like to know, but uh, that's for me to know and you to pay for. Oh, all right. Right, we'll need her, and her name and where she works. Handle main details, I'm afraid. She won't need it if it's still there. If what's still there? Fancy her, do you? I tell you, it's the black stockings that do it. Where's Priscilla gone? She won't be a minute. And then you can have the number and anything else you want to know about this nursing list of tarts. Do you have the 150 in cash? Look, I said 100 pounds, so don't start your tricks. I'm not as easy to fool when I'm sober, as you'll find out. You know me, just having a little joke. Exactly. I prefer you when you're eye drunk. You're more fun, not cynical. Why? Was it still there? You bet it was. Bet she ain't even missed it yet. Was what still there? You said you wanted the back and no questions asked. Is that a back? Is that the deal? No questions asked. All right. Good. Give me the money and I'll give you the bag. Stop messing about and give me the silly bag. No, you're getting arsy. How do we know you'll give us the money once you've got the bag? Shall we just get something straight? I am the honest, upright citizen here, a pillar of society, and you are the loathsome slime of this modern world. My words mean something. Yours are better than fables, a bull's tit. Now give me the sunny bag! Oh, I'll give him the bag, Chris. No, not until he gives us the money. Give him that bloody bag or I'll give you one! Yes! Driver's license, ID. I know as much about her as she does. Credit cards? For no money, I see. I suppose you've got that. You said no questions. Just idle curiosity. I'll give you a bit of advice for, for nothing. <laughs> Tell her not to leave her on the back seat in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you take the credit cards? Well, too dodgy nowadays, what with CCTV cameras everywhere. Cash only, that's our rule. Why did, where did you leave the bag? Well, we didn't say we just leave it. It's throwing the bushes outside the flat this morning. Just as she came out, made herself, scar made herself scarce and scarfed for the morning. Came back just in time to see Delvin leave. Thought we'd give you a bell. <laughs> Lucky for you, eh? Exactly how much money was in here? Only 15 bloody quid. It's hardly worth the trouble. Still, it turned out to be quite profitable in the end. Not bad, I suppose. Now, what about 100 quid? Oh, yes. A deal's a deal. And they say crime doesn't pay. Great. Nice to do business. Good to be helped to an old friend. Here, 
There's only 85 quid here. What's your game? I told you you couldn't trust him. You said 100 quid. That's right. 85 pounds you've got from me, and 15 pounds that you've got from in here. Oh, am I reckoning? That's 100 pounds. You just weep with this slime. True, but I've been known to be a bit slippery myself. You bastard. We'll get you for this. Why don't you call the police for some play? I'm very disappointed in you, Seb. Oh dear, I don't know how I shall live with myself. But I'll try. I will say one thing to you two, though. What's that? Piss off, both of you! And don't bother to call again, I'll be permanently out. Off you go now. And think it's always lucky you've made 85 pounds and don't push your luck. Bye! You bastard! So you said now, piss off! Come on, we won't stay where we're not wanted. Well, I should think that keeps you on the move, then. Don't bother to thank me, just go. Pet? Yes, I just wanted to say... Pet? Pet! Damn. Now, Pet, don't hang up... National insurance number, diary, tampon type, you name it, I know it. You crafty little devil. How did you find out? Did you hire a private detective? That's for me to know and you to find out. Well, all I can say is you're wasting your time because she's not going to answer the phone or talk to you ever again, so you might as well just leave her alone. Oh, I don't give up that easily. <laughs> I can be as stubborn as she is. I'll just keep on going till she gives in. She'll have to give in in the end. You are causing her a great deal of pain. Rubbish. I'm just trying to get to know her. Well, perhaps you are, but she knows as much about you as she wants to know. She hardly knows me at all. But she will. You'll see. Why can't you just take no for an answer? Sorry, it's not my style. Oh, it doesn't matter what she wants, then. Not really. I'm sure I can talk her around. You don't understand. I'm very fond of her. Surely that can't be a bad thing. If you were fond of her, you'd leave her alone. Oh, don't give me that old shit. If you really loved her, you'd give her up. True love is unselfish. Too much Milton Boone, Val. Oh, I can't talk to you. Come on, let's get on with your treatment. Why are you so convinced she won't talk to me? Because I spent four hours with her last night talking all about you, and I can assure you, you are the last thing she wants in her life. Why? Well, she just deserves better, that's all. What's the matter with me? Oh, I see. She deserves someone with two working legs. Oh, don't talk daft. That wouldn't bother her at all. She's the kindest girl I've ever known. Saint Petula, eh? Too good for a rotten sinner like me. Exactly. Oh, for goodness sake, Val. Mrs. Turner to you. All right, Mrs. Turner. I'm not the devil, you know. I'm a very ordinary chap. Why aren't I good enough for pet? My intentions are honourable. I can keep her in a manner far better than she's accustomed to. I'd be true to her. Of course, I don't find it a bit difficult to be otherwise. I can assure you I'm not after her to get just to get a free physio. I can afford the best of the care for the rest of my life. So, why aren't I good enough for pets? Oh, I don't know. She doesn't want you. That's what's the matter with you. Perhaps it's your personality. I can't help my personality. Maybe if she'd been brought up like me, she wouldn't have such a sunny disposition either. Oh, what are you on about now, brought up like you? What is it, poor little rich boy? Oh, it's all right for you to scoff. I was brought up by a succession of nannies until I was nine. And then it's goody-goody, we can bunny off to boarding school. I didn't even see my parents during the holidays. Then when I left college, they split up and went their separate ways. Of course, they looked after me. They bought me a partnership in a stockbroking firm. But that was it. I was on my own. So I may be a bit hard and brash, but that's the way I've had to be. Look after number one and sod everyone else. And you must admit, my philosophy hasn't done me too badly. Oh no, I can see how well you've done. 
I can see all your friends all around you, breaking down the door to be with you. All your friends from work, at the rugby club, or with the girls. I'll tell you what your philosophy's got you, nobody. I don't need anybody. Oh, no, there was a couple, but they only wanted you for your money. Oh, it's all right for sweet Bajula with her loving family and her loving friends to smile her way through life. She's had it easy. You know nothing. Oh, yes, I do. She told me about it last week. She was helping her lovely mummy get ready for a 50th birthday party. I don't even know what country my mother was in on her, on her 50th birthday party. Come to think of it, I can't even remember when, remember when her birthday is. June the something or other. Still, she seems to have forgotten mine. She thinks she remembered. I was the only child she ever had. She said I almost killed her. For all I've seen her during my life, she might as well have died. But don't talk to me about my personality. And I can assure you I've got the persistence to get the sweet patula around here if it takes forever. Please, just leave her alone for her sake. No, that girl's had it too easy. She needs a little angst in her life. Can't she just brought off that pink cloud and down into the real world with real the rest of us? Real world? Real bloody world? Right, I'm going to tell you something now. You think you've had it so hard. I'm going to tell you something about the easy life Pet has had. Has she ever mentioned her father? No, I don't think so. Oh, no, she hasn't. I know that. How? About 18 years ago. Oh, Christ, the history lesson begins. Oh, shut up and listen, will you? Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I'm sure something terrible happened. Did young Petula's bunny die? All right, then, if you don't want to listen. All right, all right, tell me the whole sad story. When Pet was seven, I lived next door. Oh, we've known her forever. Oh, just shut up and listen. It was late one Saturday night. We had a lot of noise from next door. Screaming and yelling. My husband said I should just ignore it. It wasn't the first time there'd been grumpiness on a Saturday night. Her dad was an odd one. Most of the time he didn't speak, but occasionally, when he'd have a drink, he was quite, quite different. The noise went on for about 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden it stopped. That was worse, really. I lay there, straining to hear something. I mean, you usually could. The walls weren't that thick, but there was nothing. Eventually, I couldn't stand it any longer. I put my robe on and I started to leave. I mean, he said I shouldn't interfere, but I had to know. Suddenly, we heard the door slam so hard it shook the whole house. And then we heard his car scream away. Now, being a nursing casualty, there wasn't much that could shock me, but I don't know, I was frightened when I approached that front door. He'd slammed it but it hadn't caught. It, it was standing wide open. I didn't want to go in. Oh, if only I'd have gone in there. What did you see? I shouldn't be telling you this. Pet wouldn't like it. For goodness sake, I've got to know now. Well, promise me you won't tell her I told you. I promise. Not that at all. Anyway, I've gone this far. I'll carry on. But June, Pet's mum. She was lying at the bottom of the stairs. She was covered in blood. I could hear her whimpering, so I knew she was alive, but she was in a terrible state. Her lips were all split and bleeding. She could barely speak. All she kept saying was pet, pet, over and over again. And then she lost consciousness. I was going to ring for the ambulance straight away, but then I thought, no, I'd better go upstairs and find pet first. I called to her as I went up the stairs, but there was no reply. Oh, you don't know how much I wanted her to answer. Climbing those stairs was like climbing Mount Everest. When I got to the landing, I saw her. She was lying in the doorway to her room. All she had on was a, a little nighty with, with sooties on it. It was torn barely covered her at all. She looked like a little, naked, broken doll, arms and legs all at different angles. I covered her with what remained of a blood-soaked sheet, and then I tried to find a pulse. I thought she was dead. I'm sorry. 
I haven't told this story since the court case and it still upsets me. I can imagine. Anyway, I, I phoned for an ambulance and then I went back and I, I did find a weak pulse. She was in intensive care for 10 days. They didn't give her much hope. And her mother wasn't much better. What had happened? Well, June told us later, she found him in Pet's room. You can imagine what he was trying to do. My God, she was only seven. Of course, June tried to stop him, but he went mad. He beat and kicked her all the way down the stairs to where I found her. She had ribs broken, ankle, arm, teeth knocked out. It was months before she was right. And what about Pet? Well, he must have gone back and finished what he started. Bastard! She had terrible internal injuries. You never know how they were caused. But physically, she healed quite well. It was the mental trauma that was worse. She just withdrew into herself. She, she didn't speak for nearly two years. We despaired she ever would. And then one day, she just came back to us. The same bright, happy little girl she'd always been. It was like a miracle. She started to do well at everything. She did well at school and at college. In fact, everything she tried. And what did they do to that bastard father? Oh, well, he did do one good thing that night. He drove to the factory where he worked and he hanged himself. So you can see how listening to you going on about what an easy life Pet has had makes me just a little bit cross. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't want you to be sorry. I want you to leave her alone. You know, during those two years when she didn't speak, I shall never forget the hurt, haunted look she had on her face, and I hope never to see it again. Now, I don't know what you said to her the other night, but that look was back. It wasn't as strong as before, but it was there. She needs a kind, gentle man to look after her. Someone who'll care for her the way she needs, not a self -a Opinionated, selfish egotist like you. Do you really think of me like that? <laughs> I know it. I don't think of myself like that. You're the only one that doesn't. You could be right. Here. You'd better give her this back. Does it matter? Tell her I tell her I found it. And I won't be bothering her anymore. morning. Where have you been? Ten miles in the new chair. Ten miles? Isn't that a bit much? Not in the new sports chair. I'll be ready for the marathon in ten weeks. That'll show the buggers. What was it last night? Basketball? <sighs> yep. We're playing a team from Cambridge next week. Tell you what, I slept the sleep of the dead. Well, I'm not surprised, but you don't want to go too mad. <laughs> don't worry about me. I've always been the same, and I'm feeling great. There is just one thing, though. What? My legs. Last night they were jumping about like Fred Astaire's. Well, it's just motor reflexes, you know. Yeah, I know. But it's just odd, you know, your legs jumping around without you doing anything. Still, you get a new car next week, don't you? Yep, that's right, with all the alterations and attachments, it'll almost drive itself. Still, it'll be nice to behind the, be behind the wheel again, even if I do have to learn to drive all over. You've come on a lot this last month, haven't you? Yep, and it's all thanks to, the, to your wonderful influence. If you weren't already married, I'd get down on my knees and propose to you. Well, that's if I weren't uh, already married and you could get down on your knees. Yep, that's right. 
Well, I'll tell you this much, lovely boy. If I weren't already married and you could get down on your knees, I'd turn you down. <laughs> I knew it, you're just a tease. Oh, come on, let's get on with your treatment. I met a couple in the bar last night after the game. They've invited me around for drinks and a, and a meal next week. Oh, yes, what sort of couple? <laughs> oh, don't worry. A nice middle-class young couple. He was into IT and she was very nearly into a little red dress. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Nothing. Don't go getting jealous. It's spring when a young man's fancy turns to thoughts of the ladies. Oh, you're full of yourself this morning, aren't you? Just counting my blessings, that's all. It's funny. Never used to think you're happy. I, um, I saw Kit yesterday. Really? How was she? Fine. I realise that's the first time you've mentioned this, because they do the bag back. Yeah, well, I've, uh, I've not seen her lately. Why not? She's been on holiday for two weeks. Where'd she go this time of year? Brussels. Brussels? Oh, I see. Paul the Pratt. That's back on again, isn't it? No, I don't think so. Of course it is. She spent two weeks with him, didn't she? Don't think they played Tomb Raider in the evening. Well, that's not for me to say. She didn't have to, it's obvious. I don't know why you had to tell me. I didn't need to know. Just cruel. Oh, I thought you'd be interested. What does it matter to you who she's with? Oh, it doesn't matter to me. She doesn't seem not know that at all. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. I didn't see. Oh, no. It's me being silly again. Look, tell you what. I'll go and get on the bed and you can massage my lower portions. Can't say fairer than that. said you spent two weeks with us. Well, she's a big mouth. What else did she tell you? Nothing. Just that. Not that it's anything to do with me, but uh, it's true, isn't it? Well, yes and no. It's got to be one or the other. Well, yes, I spent two weeks in Brussels with him, but no, we're not back together in the way that you mean. So you just went for a holiday? Yes, he invited me, so I went. Not that, as, as I said, it's nothing to do with me, but I uh, thought you were definitely finished with it. Well, as lovers, yes, but when he invited me, he said he wanted to continue to see me as a friend. Don't believe it. Can you spell for that? Yes, I did. But it was something he said that convinced me. Wow, do tell me what he said. Perhaps I can use it sometime. It must be a wonderful line. I doubt you'd be able to. You know I said he was less than passionate in the bedroom. I do recall you mentioning it. Well, I found out why. I thought it was me. Oh, I can't imagine that. Thank you. 
But all became clear when I met his new partner. I realised I just wasn't his type. What was he like? She was a fella called Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's not Paul the Brat, it's Paul the Buff. Don't be so nasty. I was very relieved. Explained an awful lot about our relationship. I mean, we got on so well as friends, but when it came to the passion, well, there was none. Well, hardly any. So how do you get on with him now? Great. All girls together with his friend Simon, who I might add is absolutely gorgeous. <coughs> it was just what I needed after you. But you see, after two weeks, Seb, I need some passion in my life. So that's why I swapped you. For some passion? Well, Val said you'd be no good for me. She said we'd be rowing all the time, you'd depress me, bring on plagues of locusts, death of the firstborn, you know, generally ruin the life. And do you think I will? Yeah, she's a good judge of character. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing back? You didn't have to come. I know, but I thought amongst all the misery there'd be plenty of laughs, lots of love, and life would be exciting or at, the ver or at the very least interesting. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with me, I just don't want to be with anyone else. I'd prefer someone steady and reliable, but... Love's involuntary, so here I am, there you are, and what have you got to say about that? I say you're a bloody marvel. Quite right, but I think now would be a nice time to kiss me. I could eat you. No, a kiss will do. I love you, Anne. I love you too. I hated being away from you. Me too. I can't imagine how much. That's not what Val said. She said you were having a whale of a time. Lots of new interests, new sport, a new car. That was just so I could forget about you. It was either that or going loony. Yeah, you must admit you gave up pretty quickly. I would have thought you would have been more persistent. I was quite disappointed when I only got four or five phone calls. And then the bag. Where did you get it from? Ah, yes, the bag. Well, it's, a, it's a long story. I'll tell you about it later. Look, I didn't give up because I didn't care for you. But you did give up pretty quickly. Yeah, well... I suppose I did, but you thought it was for the best. You and Val? Yeah. What did she say? Well, she told me. You know. She had no right. She's a big mouth. Wait till I see her. You couldn't keep a thing like that secret. I would have found out sooner or later. I don't like people knowing, especially you. I never told Paul. Why? You can't imagine how horrible it was. I just... Don't like to think about it. I mean, what would people think of me? Think of you? What could they possibly think of you? I mean, they just had a terrible experience and you've come out of it well. I know I should feel like that, but I don't. I feel guilty. That's ridiculous. You've got nothing to feel guilty about. I know, I know. I've told myself that a million times. Do you want me to tell you about it? No, not now. We have plenty of time to talk about that. The rest of our lives, I hope. So you don't mind? What is there to mind? All I know is that you're a lovely girl, and I adore you. I never told any of my other boyfriends. Why not? I just thought, well, I don't know what I thought. I would think anybody would love you more knowing what you've been through. I know I do. It's moving. What? Oh, I know. I've never been a sentimental soul, but I've been <laughs> close to tears. What? I moved too. Not you, you daft bat, your toe. Oh, that's it's been jumping around all over the place. It doesn't mean anything, you know that. No, this time it's different. It's moving in time with what you're saying. Is it? Which one? This one, the big one. Look, go on. See? Is that me? Well, I think so. Try again. Go on. Go on. Hang on a minute. I'm concentrating. Right. Now twice. That's it. Now three times. Now one, two, three. Now stop. Hold on a minute. This is making me sweat. Right, now keep it still. What? Keep it still. I want to see if the bugger stays still when you tell it. Oh, well, that should be easy. And stop swearing at me. Oh, I'm sorry. I do swear when I get excited. Don't you like it? <laughs> I like anything you do. Well, it's a good job, because I don't think I could stop. It's good, isn't it? What? Being in love for the first time. <laughs> yep, it's great. Is it your first time? Yep, me too. Who bloody rang? Right, again. Who bloody rang? Not you <laughs> shout in the toe. How many times? Oh, just wriggle it. Uh, well, I don't know whether I can do that, but I'll give it a go. How's that? That's wonderful. That's the most wonderful wriggle I've ever felt. That was wonderful. You're wonderful. The whole bloody world's wonderful. It certainly is. Well, that was just a little wriggle. 
What will I get on the day I walk? Well, look, remember, it's just a start. Something more might happen or it might not. Who knows? Look, if all I can ever do is wriggle that one toe, then I shan't complain. As long as I've got you. Me too. Aren't we sloppy sods? Who cares? Not me. Come on, you lovely man. Wriggle for me some more. Theatre. 
Now, I wouldn't advise you to get the front seat, <laughs> but don't miss it. Let's find out well, what date is it going on. But wait a minute, it's a prompt. What date is it going on? I'll <laughs> <laughs> be back in your programme anyway. And uh, I, I say, we're really going to push the bows out this year. Well, we, we've managed to raise the money, do, money doing these things. So we're not going to make a profit on it. But we don't want to make too big a loss. <laughs> so please come. Thank you very much for coming and good night. Thank you. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs>